Hello and welcome to episode 10 of A Rare Chronology, Normal Game Couch's uh, series of quick looks at the games uh, that compose Rare Replay, Rare's uh, classic games anthology, if you will, retro games anthology, compilation. Uh, we are on games 28, 29, and 30. We are wrapping it up today. Um, I'm trying to remember what comes after this. See, the problem with these later games is they don't emulate inside of Rare Replay. They don't play natively inside of Rare Replay. So that's why we've been starting at the main men menus lately. Um, I'm thinking ahead. I think, uh, uh, next is v after Jetpack Refueled, we got uh, uh, Viva Pinata. It's one of the Viva, Viva Pinata spin-offs. I think it's uh, Party Animals. That seems to ring a bell. And then after that, we have uh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. So stick around for that. We have to unfortunately take five minutes break in between, five minute breaks in between the streams. So it's going to be three individual streams tonight. As always, we're playing each game for 40 minutes apiece. Uh, I did the math <laughs> and figured out that that's the uh, the uh, the best amount of time to facilitate the stream and the show and the games and everything. So 40 40 minutes per game. It's a reasonable chunk of each game. Reasonable for a quick look, at any rate. So. Might as well get the uh, the last episode here on the road. We're starting with Jetpack Refueled. I was thinking before the stream, and I, I probably shouldn't think this way, but... Ugh, Jetpack. This game has been, like, in and out of my... Like, like now playing library for the better part of ten years. And I'm not going to say that I'm... I've been playing it for 10 years. <laughs> I'd go crazy if that were the case. But I feel like I feel like I've seen it so much and I'm kind of tired of it. But it's part of the uh, the collection, so we'll go ahead and, and get it underway here. 40 minutes on the clock. Yep. This is kind of an odd-looking menu. It's it seems it seems like like small somehow. I can't really can't really define what seems odd with it. Play Jetpack Refueled or the classic original game. Well, we already did the classic from 1983, so we'll play Jetpack Refueled. Okay, uh, Jetpack Refueled, the brand new version of the classic game. Or we can play refueled from a starting level, either five or nine. Begin play from a previously reached rocket assembly level. Or retro. That's the uh, original 1983 release. Let's play refueled. 40 minutes on the clock. Oh, God. Yeah, I've been complaining about... Okay, hold on. I've been complaining about my timer this whole series. I think it might have finally bit the dust. 40 minutes on the clock. Go. Okay. I don't even know what the buttons are. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, uh... Like, make heads or tails out of stuff. The controls are kind of... Kind of strange. Honestly, I think I might even prefer the original uh, the original jetpack. Just saying. What killed me? I'm not too into these uh, like browser flash game graphic graphics. You know what I mean?
I'm not one to really care about graphics all that much, but I don't know that I, uh, I don't know that I like the graphics too much on this. It's, it's low end. I expect better from Rare. And the controls are weird too. Thrust is on the, uh, the right trigger. Doesn't feel right. God, how much fuel do we need? Is that it? Yeah, it doesn't feel right on the, uh, the right trigger. It feels off somehow. Ah! Jeez, getting hectic. Is that it? That's it. Brain nest on Mias. I'm gonna change. I I feel like I like a different control scheme would greatly enhance my gameplay. Ah. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I think I prefer the original. I don't like the controls on this one. I think the controls are what's ruining it for me. What's that? You know what's cool about this being the last episode and all, is I've been, like, purposefully not watching Giant Bomb's Quick Look, even though I really wanted to, because I wanted to go into these games green, like, as green as possible. Now that I'm wrapping it up, I'll finally be able to watch that Giant Bomb's Quick Look. I like the, the graphics on the landscapes. Ah. I think the ship could have used a redesign. That doesn't look good to me. It doesn't really look like a ship to me, you know what I mean? Ah, that guy materialized out of thin air. Not cool. Not cool, man. Yeah, I bought uh, Jetpack Refueled when it was new on Xbox 360. You know, Retro Games is my bread and butter, so to speak. I'm you know, that's my main jam. So, you know, I picked up Jetpack Refuel just because of what it was. Um, but, I don't know, it, it never really impressed me all that much. The Scab Nebula. It's so awkward having the thrust on the right trigger. It does not feel right, dude. Ah! I was trying different buttons. God! I was trying different buttons to see if I could find something else that had a... a different button that had thrust on. Well, let's go into options here and change the controls. I mean, that's my main complaint is the controls. Um, stick, wait, stick left? What does that mean? Controls, control Jetman style, right trigger to thrust, stick left. What does that mean? Stick left or stick right? What? I don't know what that means. Stick left. Stick left doesn't do, do stick, ah. Stick left doesn't thrust, man. What is that? What does that mean? St 
stick left or right? I don't know what that means, dude. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like we can change it. Stick left. Don't know, dude. Don't know what that means. It feels like I should be pulling the right trigger to shoot. I think that's where the disconnect is in my brain. Because like every other game in the world, you use the right trigger to shoot. Did I have this much trouble with the first one? Is the first one like this? I don't remember, dude. That was like 10 weeks ago. Episode a week. That was like 10 weeks ago. I don't remember what it was like back then. Ah! God. God, lay off, dude. I, what we're seeing here is something I've commented on before, and it's Rare's propensity to throw everything at you. That's what Rare does, dude. They make these games, they could have been like... I mean, listen, most of these games are solid, okay? I'm not going to say that they're not solid. Most of these games are effing solid. But what Rare does, and I've seen it... <laughs> I want to say I've seen it like almost 30 times. I've seen it 28 times. What Rare does, and I've seen it 28 times, is they throw everything at you, dude. Ah, they just litter the screen with enemies so haphazardly. It's like a bad Super Mario movie. You know what I'm saying? And these are these are professional game makers, dude. I expect more from them. Ah. Okay. Well. That's rare style, right there, dude. Rare style throw everything at the player, whether it makes sense or not. We gotta build the ship up in order here. Ah! Oh, got dive bombed. Got kamikaze. I don't know what piece... There's no indication as to like what piece is next. I don't see any other piece. for that piece and it wouldn't pick it up. Oh, but it picks it up now. Something must have happened that I didn't catch. Oh, my face itches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not really that into jetpack. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of starting to get the feel for this one now, I guess. But, I don't know, dude. Jetpack doesn't seem like the game that needs, like, a remaster. You know what I mean? Especially after seeing so many of the other games on their uh, collection. It seems like Jetpack was kind of pulled out of the blue for a remaster. I don't really know why. It's good, but it's not great. Three more fuels. God. Just throw everything at me. Just throw everything at me, Rare. What you do best. Ugh. <laughs> right. Hmm. Multiplayer. Begin a multiplayer game on your own Xbox 360 console or Xbox Live. Think anybody's playing this? Ultimate, learn about Ultimate Play the Game and Rich Heritage of Jetpack. 
Before there was Rare, there was Ultimate, set up by entrepreneurial British brothers Tim and Chris Stamper. Ultimate hit the big time in 1983 with its first home computer title, Jetpack. Audiences of the day were gripped by Jetpack's bold graphics and fluid, addictive gameplay. It was also just the first in a string of acclaimed releases between 1983 and 1986. Many Ultimate games from this era, such as Saber Wolf, Attic Attack Night Lore, a pioneering work in isometric 3D, and Jetpack itself, can claim to rank among the UK gaming industry's most influential titles. Attic Attack was good. Despite forays into other formats such as Commodore 64 and MSX, the ZX Spectrum remained Ultimate's platform of choice. Until, that is, its founder's attentions turned to the new breed of international consoles. In the name of progress, the Ultimate label was sold and the name finally allowed to burn out in the late 1980s, only for a promising console de developer called Rare to rise from the ashes. Oh, that's it? I thought we were going somewhere. <laughs> it sounded like we were going somewhere there, but I guess not. Alright, let's keep going. Refueled. So we made it to, to at least five, right? So I guess we'll play Refueled from five. Stand Sounds by. good. The dude looks different now. Does the dude look different, or is it just me? I didn't notice that last time. We played this level already, but I didn't notice they looked different. Maybe he doesn't, maybe it's all in my head. I don't need to lay off. Rare style. like on the ship. Okay. I guess I picked it up without realizing it. The screen is so hectic, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jetpack's alright. It's just... I feel like I've been playing this game on and off for the better part of ten years. I guess because I have been playing it on and off for the better part of ten years. Is that it? Can I jump down now? Stand by. See, it's like, we've been playing all these rare games in chronological order, right? And we've seen a lot of cool stuff and we've gone to a lot of cool worlds. And, uh, you know, there... It's, it seems like every every next game was like a step ahead. Like, we kept getting more and more advanced. The gameplay kept getting uh, more and more varied, and we kept seeing cooler and cooler things, and more diverse worlds, and more di diverse gameplay mechanics. And it just kept, basically just kept getting better and better as we went along. Now, I understand that this is a, uh, a remake, but... You know, there's ways to remake a game and make it fresh again. And that is not what they did here. Yeah, it's got a new coat of paint. But it's still jetpack. And that's, you know, that's fine. That's what they were going for. But this is like the first time in my series, Rare Chronology, that I can't say, like, you know, that, that this is progress. You know what I mean? God, these freaking guys. I feel like... I feel like... I feel like this remake probably should have been left on the kind of game floor, you know what I mean? I mean, for the... for the collection. You know, I think it's great that they made it, and 
and it's a game, you know, to be rever revered in certain circles. I get that. But this didn't need to be on the collection, you know? I mean, this, this seems like filler for the collection. Alright, get in there. This is like a... What? Get in there, what the hell? This seems like filler for the collection, though. It seems like this was some. They had their Xbox 360 emulator working. They probably wanted to hit the mark of 30 games. This was an easy one to stick on the to stick on the uh, the CD. You know what I mean? Where's the fuel, dude? Oh, it's down there. I didn't even see it down there. All this fog, it's like a Nintendo 64 game out here or something. Give me a fuel. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. <laughs> That's when Metallica lost it, dude. Metallica really stopped being good after well, I guess when Load came out. I was gonna say after Load, but Load sucked too. Which is like weird, because that's when they started getting popular again. I remember growing up and, and their album Load came out and people freaking went nuts over it. And I'm like, dude put in Master of Puppets, dude. Do yourself a favor and put in Master Puppets. Like, that's what I was telling people back then. Like, hey, hey kid, hey friend in school. You're into into Metallica's new album? They're popular again? You're into this new album, Load? Put in Master of Puppets. And then call me tomorrow and tell me what you thought of that. Do yourself a favor. God, these freaking things. George is getting frustrated! <laughs> Man, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to pull 21 more minutes out of this. Mm. Can we start from 9? Is that stupid? Let's do it. Stand by. Callisto Station. On, dude. I want to put jetpack behind me. <laughs> there's a there's a option in the menu on this release to play the original jetpack. I'm half tempted to do that because I think it's a better game. I'm not gonna though, because we already did that one. Was that the first was that the first game we did on the series? And here we are. Years later. What would this be? Like 80, 83 and this was 2006. Uh, I can't think of numbers right now, dude. It messed my head up. What, like 25 years? Something like that? Here we are, 25 years later. Playing the same exact game. Nothing has changed, except now it has worse graphics. The gameplay is the same, but the enemy patterns and graphics are inferior. Oh, God, look at all this crap on the screen, dude. God, Rare, you do this every time. Can I go off the screen? And, yeah, I can. I can go off the screen to the left and re-emerge on the right. I wish I had known that. Oh, God, it's like not even worth it, dude. Look at all this crap on the screen. I hate this. Dude, Rare, why do you do this in every one of your games? You flood the screen with enemies, dude. Every game. Why do you do this? Look 
This game makes me want to play Joust. God, lay off, dude. Jesus, look at this crap. God. I'm almost tempted to just let myself die and go back to the Oh my god, dude. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done skipping to level 9. We're not doing that anymore. We've got 18 minutes left of this game. <sighs> I honestly don't know, dude. I just, I want to move on to Viva Pinata. I want to move on to Banjo-Kazooie, but I gotta do 18 more minutes of this. Maybe I should, like... Ugh, there's gotta be... I'm looking around, like, my room to see if there's something I can... interject into this to make it interesting. I would read excerpts from Ready Player One, but I don't want to get sued. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Let's start from level one again. Stand by. He's killing me, dude. I wanna move on. Too much jetpack. I've experienced too much jetpack in my life. I wanna move on. Jetpack. Jetpack! Sometimes there's a game that beats you down emotionally and physically. And it's not because it's hard. It's not because it's it's mundane. It's just because it's I don't know, dude. It's not something you can put your finger on, dude. Ah, uh, I just I'm not listen. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to talk crap about this game, dude. If anything, I'm talking crap about the remake. But I'm not even really talking crap about the remake, dude. It has its place, and ultimately, I'm glad they they made it and released it and whatever. But dude, seriously, like I don't I think I got this game for free from like Xbox Gold or something back in the day. I don't even, I don't even remember. I don't even remember how I got it. I, I probably did buy it, I probably did pay for it. And ultimately I'm glad I did. But dude, this has been like in and out of my rotation for games for the better part of ten years. And normally when I play this, like when I play like Jetpack or when I might have played Jetpack, it would be like maybe like a five minute like pick me up. You know what I mean? Like not like a 40 minute gauntlet of rare style enemy orgy levels. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I don't want any more of this. All right, I'm gonna stop trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stop being so negative about it. Hey, you know what? I get to play. A, I get to play a video game on Twitch. That's good. That's a good thing. I'm playing a video game on Twitch. That's a good thing. Having fun. I'm not being negative. I'm having fun. I want that gold. Give me the gold. Where to go that? God, these guys are like crowding the fuel. Fishbowl brains. The environments look good. I like the environment. They have a very, um, like, 
watercolor marker look to it. You know what I mean? I like the environment. You know, these guys don't crowd the screen because they kamikaze when they hit something. How come that guy... Okay. I thought that guy was, like, not getting hit or something. Air catch. Air drop. Air shoot. Jetpack. I'll tell you this though, if there was another jetpack game, like a third jetpack game, on this disc, you would see me lose lose it, like, publicly. Like, I'd lose my mental state publicly. I'd, I'd literally go crazy. And it would make a pretty good highlight, probably. The Scab Nebula. Wow, look at those graphics. That's good graphics. I like the, the kind of galaxy star field in the background. I have a friend that uh, makes those uh, leggings. Leggings that look like that. I think, I think she sells them on Etsy. I'm not 100% sure. Never really uh, looked into uh, the leggings that my friend makes. I've seen them though. They look a lot like that. I wish I could drop a URL right now for y'all. If she sells them on Etsy, you can probably just search Galaxy Leggings and find them. I don't know. What am I going to tell you how to use the internet now? You're smart, you know how to use the internet. What are these things anyway? Like hermit crabs or like... They, they kind of look like hermit crabs, but their shells look like meteors or something? I don't even know, dude. Uh, what? Oh my god, dude. Rare style! So I, I, I'm coming off of playing a lot of Super Mario Maker. Like, last week, I was in the thick of it when I was streaming this. And I'm sure I probably mentioned Super Mario Maker more than a couple times. I don't remember. I do this week to week, and I don't really make a log of everything I talk about, but I probably mentioned Super Mario Maker more than a couple times. Um, but I'm coming off of it now, and, uh, you know, I got the Talos Principle, so I'm playing that now. Um, but there's there's a problem in Super Mario Maker, and it's that all these people making these levels think that the coolest thing to do is to just make like a, a like a pretty simple, straightforward level, but fill it with a ton of enemies. And I call those orgy levels because that's what they are, dude. They're orgy levels. That's all it is. It's a it's a big mess of I don't know, like a mess of, of graphics and gameplay gone wild. Like it's not they're not fun to play those levels. And that's how I feel about about a lot of stuff that I see in these rare games. It's just it's it's a mess, dude. I mean I'm trying to be nice. I, I told myself I wasn't gonna be so negative. I'm trying to be nice, but it is a mess, dude. You know, you can't put so many elements in a level like that because you have to you have to be able to account 
for gameplay each step of the way. If you throw so many elements into a level, you can't vouch for the gameplay inherent to that level. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, if it's so convoluted and, and crammed with content and enemies every which way, you can't vouch for the quality, the quality gameplay of that level because it's impossible to, uh, uh, to study it, to figure it, to, to uh, understand its behavior, to, to quantify the gameplay inherent to that level. It's impossible to do. So I write off levels like that, and I get a lot of that kind of stuff from, the, from rare games. And it bothers me, because I think that they should be better than this. You know, I have a lot of fond memories playing rare games on, say, the Super Nintendo, which uh, I'll go ahead and point out, none of which are on here, none of which are on this collection, but I do have a lot of fond memories of playing rare games on the Super Nintendo specifically. I don't know, dude. I feel ki I, I kind of feel like in, if, if I'm gonna draw an allegory here, I feel like in Super Mario Maker, you as the creator are responsible for vetting the quality of a level. You're responsible for every ounce of gameplay that a player may squeeze from your level. You're responsible for testing those levels. You're responsible for understanding the ins and outs of those levels. Imagine, if you will, that you are writing a strategy guide for these levels. You need to test them. You need to go in and out of, of your level 10 to 20 times. You need to, to play it in and out. You need to, to, to vouch for every second of gameplay inside of that level. And when I see these orgy levels, dude, when I see these levels that are nothing but 30, 40 enemies on screen at once and you're meant to just go through them with like a trick or they give you a star at the beginning or something, like dude, that's not fun, dude. It's just a mess. You obviously didn't, uh, uh, you know, you obviously can't vouch for every second that I spend in this level. So why do you build it like this? That's my problem with, with Super Mario Maker. And when I see stuff like that happen in, in, in these rare games, because it really seems to be a common theme here. They just throw so much stuff at you. Okay? When I see that happen in these rare games, I get the same feeling. But the difference is, these people are supposed to be professional game designers. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there was a level about halfway through streaming this game where the bottom section where the ship is was so absolutely littered with enemies. And that's fine. Like, if that's what you're going for, that's fine. I can get behind that if that's, like, the schwa of the game, you know? But there's no way that every element of that was vouched for and vetted by Rare. You know? What, what we have here is a developer ramping up the difficulty of a level via an artificial means. It's not harder because it's more challenging, it's harder because you're just throwing more stuff in. You know, that's a, that's an artificial way to increase the, the difficulty of a level. And you can't vouch for that. So I call BS on that. I, I don't, uh, I can't get behind that kind of practice, dude. I love Rare, don't get me wrong, dude, but I, I really love their 16-bit stuff. And none of that is on here. You know, Killer Instinct might have been on here, but they went with the arcade port. 
If you're gonna put, I mean, if you're gonna put, uh, you know, uh, arcade ports on here, that's fine. And that's probably better nine times out of ten. But with Killer Instinct, the arcade port is missing characters. I would have been happier with the Super Nintendo ROM than the arcade port of Killer Instinct. Now, of course, they had it on Nintendo 64 also. That would that probably would have been the best one to put on. I'm just saying, as a, a as a illustrative point, that I would have been happier with the uh, Super Nintendo version. The by technical standards, incredibly inferior Super Nintendo version. I would have been happier with that, because it, it feels more like a complete experience to me than, than the arcade version with missing characters that they put on here. I know there's different versions of the, of the arcade game. There's different ROMs. I know that. They picked the wrong ROM to put on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> this has been a very negative episode. <laughs> I don't know why, dude. I think Jetpack just puts me in a bad mood. Two minutes left. Let's see if I can be happy playing Jetpack for two more minutes. Yeah, I got the fuel. I'm gonna bring it to the ship. Awesome! I'm going to shoot that guy. Hey, I'm going to get that fuel. I'm going to bring it to the ship. Awesome. Hey, I'm going to shoot that guy. And that guy. I'm going to go get that fuel. I'm happy. I'm in a good mood. I'm playing jetpack. Yay, I did it. Tales of Zestiria, not to be confused with Tales yeah. of Vesperia. Ugh. I've been conflating the two titles for months. Grab that fuel. Ten seconds left. Alright, so if I'm not mistaken... Viva Pinata's next. Not Viva Pinata proper. I can't remember... There's two spin-off Viva Pinata games. And one of them is on this compilation, and the other one is not. I can't remember which one it is. But whichever one it is, we're about to play that next, so... We gotta take a five minute break in between the streams. It has something to do with the way VODs save. So give me five minutes. I'll be right back with Viva Pinata 